is Little Holiday joining you on weekends, this weekend. Um, yes, yeah, cities in a moment, but um, how do you undo the extinction of an animal? Well, you really can't in so many cases. Uh, but the state government thinks that in a couple of cases it can do that here in New South Wales. It's announced what it says is the largest reintroduction program of native animals ever attempted in Australia. Uh, the government selected two groups to deliver this ambitious project, and one of them is the Australian Wildlife Conservancy. It's a non-profit uh, organisation, started in the early 1990s. Its CEO is Atticus Fleming, and he's on the line. Good morning, Atticus. Hi, Linda. How do you undo extinction? Well, a lot of your listeners will know Australia has the worst mammal extinction record in the world. So there are 30 mammals that we will never be able to bring back. But there are a whole range of mammals that are clinging to survival in tiny little places, sometimes in offshore islands only. And uh, for many of those species, numbat, Bilbies, uh, and little betongs, used to be called rat kangaroos. Oh, yes. Uh, they were animals that were once uh, all across New South Wales. In most cases, haven't been seen in the state for 100 years. So we can bring those species back by translocating them from their small refuges where they now, are now found. As I said, sometimes that's only an offshore island. Mm -hmm. And reintroducing them back to New South Wales National Park. And, and how many do you think can, can be done? Well, AWC, for our part in delivering this project, we're expecting to reintroduce 10 or 11 mammal species. Okay. And as I said, for most of those, it will be the first time in 100 years uh, that they'll be, they'll be back in New South Wales National Park. So it is a, it is a huge project and, uh, you know, governments often don't, get very much credit, but um, certainly the Baird government in this case does deserve credit because, as you said in your introduction, it's, it's, it's something that hasn't been attempted before. Mm. Which parts of New South Wales uh, will the animals be reintroduced to? So they'll be in national parks in western New South Wales uh, and uh, the precise national parks haven't been revealed yet, mm -hmm. but uh, in It'll be a fantastic experience once we have accomplished this because stage one, um, again going back a step, the reason for most of these extinctions is feral animals and particularly feral cats. So uh, again, feral cats across Australia are killing tens of millions of native animals every night. So if you ask yourself why are these animals not in national parks in New South Wales or indeed in many other states, it is because of feral cats. So in order to bring back the bilby and the numbat to a national park in western New South Wales, we will need to establish large cat-free areas. So we'll be using conservation fencing initially to do that. So and that, that's, that's yet to be done, you're saying? That's yet to be done in this project. Australian Wildlife Conservancy has done it elsewhere. We've got three large-scale areas. We manage more cat-free land than any other organisation on, on mainland Australia using these conservation fences. Mm. So they'll be very big areas surrounded by these conservation fences. And for people who visit National Park, this will be a tremendous experience because going into these areas where there are no feral animals will be like stepping back in time. You'll be going back into a part of the bush Eventually, as it was a couple of hundred years ago, no feral animals and instead lots of small native mammals. And so um, Atticus Fleming is with me, the CEO of the Australian Wildlife Conservancy, as the state government uh, uh, releases this plan to, uh, to reintroduce a series of native animals into parts of, uh, of New South Wales where, they've been, uh, where they disappeared long ago, as Atticus says, uh, largely because of feral cats. Are there enough animals to do this? Do you need an intensive breeding program? How do you get the numbers? Uh, in most cases, there are enough without an intensive breeding program. But the urgency of this is highlighted by what's happening to some of these animals. So with the numbat, there are now less than a 1,000 numbats left in the world. Uh, 
or something like a little brush-tailed peton, which is one of those little rat kangaroos. There were 200,000 of these animals a little more than a decade ago. Now there are about 15,000, so 90% plus decline in about 10 years. So the stakes are very high. It's a really is a battle to save these animals from extinction. Uh, and in most cases, there's just enough so that we can translocate enough individuals from a from another uh, refuge, another uh, remaining population, without having to do the captive breeding. But in some cases, we'll need to do some captive breeding, and that's where some of the zoos, whether it's Taronga or in Western Australia, maybe Perth Zoo, will will be playing a role to help. Uh, top up numbers. Okay, and when do you expect to start actually putting animals on the ground? Uh, that's the, the timeline we're still working through with national parks, but uh, I think it's by the time you prepare the national parks, get the animals in, you're looking at probably releasing the first bilbies and numbats in uh, two to three years. Hmm. Well, it's pretty quick since you've got to build all those fences and get all those cats out and so forth. It is. I mean, we'd like, when you think about how rapidly some of these populations are declining, um, I'd like to be doing it tomorrow. Yes. But um, the good news is that once uh, we have the animals in cat-free areas, uh, they breed like rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> Except that they fortunately are not rabbits. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a fascinating um, program and, uh, of course, we'd all love to see those animals back. So uh, good luck with it. Thanks for talking to us, Atticus. Thank you, Linda. Bye-bye. Atticus Fleming, the CEO of the Australian Wildlife Conservancy. Uh, yeah, bilbies, betongs, back into places. We haven't seen them for decades. Fascinating project. 702 ABC Sydney, quarter past nine. Cities designed by women. Would they look any different?